Sarah. And I'm David. And today we've come to Live Lab to show you some science you can do in your kitchen. We're going to be making some incredible edible honeycomb. For this, you're going to need some caster sugar, golden syrup and bicarbonate of soda. You'll also need a large saucepan, a wooden spoon and a food thermometer. First, take your saucepan and add 100 grams of caster sugar and three tablespoons of golden syrup. We can see that the grains of caster sugar stand out from the viscous golden syrup, even though they are both forms of sugar. There are lots of different molecules that we call sugar. Caster sugar is crystallised sucrose, whereas golden syrup is a thick mixture of fructose and glucose formed when a solution of sucrose is heated. Put the pan on a low heat and stir it with a wooden spoon until all the sugar crystals have dissolved. And then stop stirring it and heat it, but keep a really close eye on the temperature. But why is the temperature so important? Well, the water in the golden syrup reduces the chance of the mixture burning because most of the energy goes into the work of evaporating the water molecules. But the temperature of the water controls the texture of the confectionery at the end. So what temperature do we need? Well, a higher temperature results in more water being boiled away and the less water, the harder the sweets at the end. 113 degrees Celsius makes fudge, 132 makes toffee and 149 makes hard-boiled sweets. If your temperature goes too high, the sugar molecules break apart, creating the aromas and flavours of caramelisation. But too much heat will cause the syrup to burn, creating a bitter aroma and taste. So, for honeycomb, we're looking for a much lower concentration of water, only about 2%. This means heating to a temperature of about 150 degrees. For a stickier toffee, you would heat to a much lower temperature. But what if we don't have a thermometer? Well, there are a few different methods that you can try. Uh, my personal favourite is dropping a ball of the syrup into a glass of cold water. Take the solidified drop out and look at its texture. The harder it is, the higher the temperature. We want a hard ball that cracks on contact with the cold water. This is called the hard crack temperature. Once you've reached the temperature you want, take the mixture off the heat, add in one teaspoon of bicarbonate and stir. Whoa, what's that? What you can see here is the breakdown of sodium bicarbonate generating carbon dioxide gas. In cakes and model volcanoes, baking soda creates this carbon dioxide gas due to the presence of an acid. But in this case, it's the heat which causes the sodium bicarbonate to break down and releases the carbon dioxide into the mixture, causing it to bubble away. It's important to mix it in thoroughly, otherwise your honeycomb can taste a bit salty due to excess sodium. Feel free to add lemon juice to balance it out. Now, quickly pour the hot bubbling mixture onto a baking tray covered with greaseproof paper. This will cool it down and it's the cooling of confectionery which determines whether the result will be crystalline or not. Why is that important? Crystalline confectionery is formed when molecules of dissolved sucrose collide and join together. And when enough of these molecules arrange themselves in an orderly fashion, then you get a crystal. The size of the crystals changes the texture of the honeycomb. So a few large crystals, and you get quite a coarse texture, but lots and lots of tiny little crystals, you get a very smooth and creamy texture. So what do we want with our honeycomb? Well, we want to cool it really fast so that the molecules don't have time to form a big crystal, but instead make a really smooth, brittle texture. And this is why we've used golden syrup, because the fructose and glucose interfere with the crystallisation. It also makes it nice and sticky with a great flavour. Honey will also work instead of syrup and gives a lovely flavour as well. Once the honeycomb is cooled, it's ready to eat. We've seen that the science of sweets depends on the temperature, the type of sugar and the levels of water. But there are loads of possible combinations to try out. What would happen if we let it cool more slowly? Or if we change the temperature? Well, how does it taste if you use honey instead of golden syrup? Well, give it a go. Find out and tweet us the results of your own kitchen chemistry. If you want to tuck into some more science, see what foods we might have to eat in the future as Ross tries insect sushi. And coming soon, we'll even be throwing him out of a plane as he investigates the science of skydiving. So for more science every week, click subscribe. And thank you for watching.